Model Making Guru is sponsored by eModels.co.uk, your one-stop shop for all your model making needs. eModels.co.uk, make something awesome. Hey everyone, hello, hello, hello. Welcome, welcome to part four of our build of the Bandai Mega Size Unicorn Gundam. Yes, it's, I'm doing that again. Why not? Yes, right, welcome to part four. If you remember in the last episode, I was just getting everything sorted out, getting all the bits denubbed and sanded. Uh, the beam rifle has got the glue on it now. It's all dried nicely, but I'm not going ahead and doing that. I'm going to leave this till we've done the mobile suit. I just wanted to get it glued up. So what's the next step? Well, the next step, as you can see, hedgehogs, hedgehogs, everything's on sticks. Well, almost everything. I've got four foams like this some twice as big filled with parts and I've still got a tray and a bit of stuff left over to do so this is going to be a two-step process I've got most of the parts on sticks and the first step is to do the priming uh, now we're going to do two different types of priming we're going to do the the armor which are going to be the shiny parts they're going to be primed in a different primer to the interior parts the inner frame parts which are going to be matte so we're going to start with the armor and for the armor we're going to use the lovely lovely ultimate primer gloss black yes this stuff is gorgeous if you watch me do the uh, thruster bells on the eagle you'll see how it came out it just looks beautiful and i want the shiny black because i want to be able to put the c1 powder over the top of this and make it look even more shiny or the duraluminium however i'm going to do it i'm still trying to figure it out you know me, I don't do planning. So the first step is going to be get all the, everything that's going to be shiny, so the exterior armour needs to be done in the gloss black. So I'm going to get everything ready in to spray booth. Um, I'll have to do a voiceover because as always I'll be wearing a mask so you won't be able to hear me, so I'll just do a voiceover for it and we'll get these done. So I've got a billion parts. It's going to take two sittings because I've got to get everything I've got on sticks primed and then wait for it to dry and then get all the other stuff that's still left over on sticks. Get that primed. Yeah, it's going to take me a few days. So, let's crack on. Okay, so here we are with the UMP Gloss Black Primer. Uh, now, as I said before, the application method is exactly the same if you're using the matte primer. So what we've got, I've got a big cup full of it in my airbrush. This is my Trigger Neo for a water. Uh, 0.35 nozzle, which is absolutely fine, no problems at all. Uh, and I've got the PSI to about 23, 24, something like that. I find that's a good high pressure to get the nice smoothest finished. So you can see here, the first thing I'm doing is laying down a thin misty coat. Now the purpose of this is just to give the successive coats, the proper thick wet coats, something to grip to. It's just called keying the surface. You can key a surface by sanding it, or in this case, I'm preparing it by applying a thin mist coat just so that when the main wet coats go on you don't get any surface tension issues uh, and I'll show you later on I'd have some a couple of little issues with the primer just where I'd perhaps not put enough mist coat down first so the first mist coat was a bit haphazard and slapped on this one you can see now I'm going reasonably slowly I'm pulling the trigger back just a little way I'm not really putting it on full whack but I'm just putting a reasonable coat on and moving slowly in straight lines. Uh, and then I'll, once I've done this, gone round it, I'll go back and do another sort of slightly lighter coat just to black everything out. So you, do, you can if you want to, once you've done the mist coat, just pile the primer on there, no problem. Or like this, just do it as a couple of passes and you'll be absolutely fine, you'll get a nice smooth surface. And that's it, that's how easy priming with this stuff is. Okay, so the gloss black priming has been done and oh, what a pain in the butt. Because this kit is so large, obviously the pieces are very large and all when I'm priming and painting, I need to have things on sticks. Unlike the Mega Size RX 78 II, where I could have like the legs and things all assembled into chunks so I could have only a small number of bits on sticks. Because of the psycho frame of this, you can't put anything together the only bits i've been able to put together are the two parts of the bottom part of the foot and the two halves of the lower legs and that's about it that's about all i can assemble pre-assemble to reduce the number of things on sticks so because i've got so many parts on sticks 
I've only got so many sticks and I've only got so many pieces of foam to mount the sticks into. And there's only so much space I've got to have pieces of foam with sticks and things lying around while stuff dries. So I got two thirds of the parts on sticks and foams, gloss primed them, left them for 24 hours. Then when they dried, took them all off the sticks, put them carefully back in the sorting trays, put the rest of the parts on sticks and did the same thing. Three days it took me, three days just to do the gloss black primer and I haven't even touched the parts that need a matte black primer like the interior frame parts <sighs> this is going to take forever and bear in mind once i've got everything primed i then have to go ahead and do the next bit which is a metallic base coat on most of these parts leave that then i have to do a gloss coat then do all the decals and everything else then do another gloss coat so this is going to take forever just purely because of the logistics of having all the parts so the fun is ebbing away from this build already anyway so the gloss black priming has been done and i have to say this gloss black primer from ump flipping heck it is stunning now if you saw in the last video i wasn't fairly careful i did a mist coat first and then i just slapped it on and that's kind of what you can do now there are a few places where i'm a bit too crazy with a bit over heavy uh, application the the primer does tend to gunk up your airbrush after a little while it can be quite a while it can be like half an hour 45 minutes but it does get a bit spitty so you have to just get the excess off the needle just get it off with a piece of tissue while you're spraying so there are a few places where it went a bit blobby and I, as a result i've got a little bit of orange peel you might see a little bit there um and in some places it went a little bit patchy but i think that's where i didn't really do much of a mist coat so it's going straight onto the plastic so advice always do a mist coat over the whole thing first just to give the main coat something to grip onto so it, there's no surface tension issues but it came out looking absolutely gorgeous now let's look at that um the matte uh, priming process is exactly the same it's exactly the same stuff as the matte primer i can keep saying i say varnish it's exactly the same stuff as the matte primer it's just matte or rather gloss so when i do the matte priming i'll show it quickly but it's exactly the same process so there's no difference between them um i have decided what i'm going to do uh, i've decided which parts are going to be light shiny metal and which parts are going to be dark shiny metal and i've also decided what i'm going to do with the blue parts the blue parts is the backpack and the blue parts on the bottom of the foot i'm going to leave them as black primer with a gloss coat over the top because when i was doing the backpack parts they looked fantastic in black now i know normally you don't paint things black because then you can't do any highlights and stuff but we're not doing any weathering on this we're going to do a nice clean hopefully um bill so just the gloss black with the gloss over the top should look fantabulous so i've got all the main armor parts glossed i've got the uh, the thruster bells done and as you can see they're looking spankular that's just really nice on some parts it just does come out looking like shiny black plastic it is incredible stuff i love this stuff the ump primer just in case you want to see it there you go yeah it's absolutely brilliant stuff so what is the next step well i've taken everything off the sticks and i've remounted on sticks all the parts i want to paint with a silver base color now thankfully they all fit on sticks on foams in one go so i can do all the base color in one go there's going to be two types these aren't going to be these are both going to be the light metallic the first step is to get myself some uh, you can't see this because it's stupid reflective the vallejo acrylic metal color 77.702 duraluminium or duralanium as ant calls it or duraluminium duraluminium millennium falcon so we're going to do some vallejo millennium falcon this is a uh, metallic color paint shake the living carp out of it it goes on really nice and smooth it's not particularly grainy um, when you paint it on with a brush it comes out it looks like liquid mercury or something but when you brush airbrush it on it can sometimes come out a little bit grainy but not too much not as much as say a tamiya chrome silver or something like that so it goes on great guns so we're going to do on most of the parts this duraluminium color first so on things like this and all the bits i've got on sticks right now it's about four pieces of foam and billions of parts so that's the next step um there's all there are other parts which aren't going to get the duraluminium coat that's how i'm going to get the color difference hopefully it might not come out at all but we'll see how it goes so the first thing is i need to go and get ready and do some sprayage of the drum drum of the duran duran uh so i'll go and get ready one thing to note as well uh, this color this picture may look a little bit washed out and a bit overexposed on the lighter colors you're gonna have to get used to that on this build because everything's either really dark black or really bright 
and especially once they get all metallic -y. so apologies for some of the washed out colors on this video it's the nature of the beast when you're filming reflective things cameras just don't like them so i'll shut up now i'll go and get test spray booze ready and we'll get all the things painted Right, so here we are with the drum this paint. Uh, now, it's very important to listen to what I'm saying now. What you need to do is ignore every single thing you see in this segment. I will explain in the next segment, but I need you to ignore pretty much everything you see in this little bit. Um, unless you've got like one or two parts to paint, in which case you should be fine. However, things like I've just filled the cup full of paint, you don't want to do that. I will explain in the next section, so don't panic, but I wanted to leave this bit in just for the historical record. Basically, I had a bad time. It won't come out on camera because the first few pieces I sprayed came out all right. Uh, another handy tip for you, when you're using dropper bottles, just clean off the top of the bottle before you put it, close it up again. If you're doing like a long spray session and you're going to be doing like lots of filling up your cup, it's just going to get gunked up and every time you close the lid you're going to splat paint out across the model so clean off the lid so anyway yes like i was saying you kind of want to ignore this if you've got one or two pieces to paint and it's going to take you five minutes this is actually fine you can see here i'm doing exactly the same as the primer i'm doing a light mist coat i've actually got this about 18 psi on the airbrush and i'm doing a light misty coat just to get paint on the surface to key it up uh, and then once that's on there, I'll then go in with the thicker wet coat just to build up the colour. These are very forgiving paints to spray. However, like I said, if you're doing one or two pieces, you can do what I'm doing here. However, if you've got a handful of pieces or you're looking at a good hour long spray session or anything more than a couple of pieces, don't do any of this. I will show you how I did it after I'd filmed this bit. <sighs> Sometimes, you know, things just don't work out. Hold it right there. Stop. Look, space, space gloves. Everything you've just seen in that last section with me spraying, ignore most of it. Ignore it. After I painted that one piece, I did a couple more pieces, and then things got very difficult. And what I was getting was this. This mingy, horrible, kind of horrible... What basically happened, I was using my 0.35 nozzle near free water, and as you noticed, I filled up the cup with paint. What I've learned is this, first of all, this paint separates out very, very quickly in the cup. All the pigment drops to the bottom, the carrier and the, the fluid and everything else, and the thinners stay at the top. It gunks your airbrush very quickly because it all because it all sinks to the bottom. I'm doing all the hand movements off camera here. All the paint, all the pigment sinks to the bottom, blocks up your airbrush, and all that can get through then with a lot of effort is all the thinners and all the clear carrier fluids. And what you have there is where it's clear carrier fluid, and it's kind of rippled and pooled, and then what pigment does come out gets that kind of sandy beach effect. It also gave me this as I knocked the camera. This kind of slightly lumpy effect because I was trying to build up the colour and of course it got to the point where it was flowing so what I would say if you're going to use these AK metallic paints or very specifically this Dural Aluminium is don't use a 0.35 airbrush I had to switch to my 0.5 millimeter Iwata Revolution uh, which has a bigger nozzle obviously and what I also did was I stopped filling the cup full and I just put in maybe 
10 drops, maybe five mil of paint, just enough to, to paint a couple of pieces so that by the time the cup had run out and I had to refill it, there hadn't been time for the paint to settle out, for the pigment to drop out from the carrier binding fluid stuff and separate out in the cup. So use a big nozzle airbrush if you can. Uh, use only a, a little bit of paint and keep refilling it more often. And then as you'll see in the next section, very quick bit I'll show you, don't be so delicate with the paint job. You see me I was doing a misty coat and then putting on the paint carefully. That's fine when I did that first piece. Two pieces later, I was in a living hell because of the thinners had all separated out. Get the piece, get the brush, 20 PSI, not 18 PSI like in the last bit, and just blap it on. Brrr, you'll see, I just, I just go, keep the piece moving, keep the airbrush moving, brrr, like that, and it's done. That got me something like that, which is far superior to that. Can see that's just pants and that's much better so the first piece i did came out absolutely brilliant came out like this as soon as that paint separated out and became a bit of a struggle and was blocking my airbrush it became a living hell so I use a big boy airbrush 0.5 mil i'd probably say uh only use a little tiny bit of paint in the cup and refill it more often and if it does start to sputter a little bit or you start to get mostly thinners make sure like my my revolution is a solvent safe airbrush so all i did was empty the paint out blap it through with isopropyl alcohol or rubbing alcohol that cleared it out really really quickly with the neo i was having to take the nozzle off and clean it and it was a it was a pain in the bum so big ball airbrush only put a little bit in there keep everything moving really fast and just smack it all over the piece don't be delicate with it i'll show you that now and then i better go and sort these out Ugh. right here we go Let's fix this mess. So, shake the crap out of your paint first of all, make sure all those particles are mixed into all the carriers. And for this, like I said, I'm gonna be using my 0.5 mil nozzle. Uh, it what a revolution, it's a button trigger and I hate button triggers. Now, if you see how much paint I put in here compared to the last segment, that's it, that's all I need. Just, it's about five mil, 10 mil maybe. That's enough to paint one, maybe two pieces. The idea being that by the time I have to refill that cup, it's not going to have separated out in the cup. Guarantees that I'm not going to end up spraying just all the carrier fluids and all that kind of crap on the piece, messing up the, the paint that's already on there. And as you can see, I'm moving the brush all over the place like a crazy person, and I'm constantly moving the piece around. I'm not staying in one area more than a brief second. It doesn't take long. It's actually a lot quicker, and I am actually pulling back on the trigger pretty much all the way. I'm really just blapping this on. Uh, if you're quick and you keep the brush moving and you're not holding the piece in one place and you're moving that around, you should get a nice, thin, smooth coat. But it is super, super fast. If you're doing more than a couple of pieces, this is the way to do it. If you've just got a couple of pieces and you're going to be doing it for two minutes, that's fine. Right, okay, so all the metallic parts have now been painted. <sighs> now, it may look like I've never used this paint before. I actually have used this paint before. It's just last time I used it, I only had to paint a small number of things, so I never got to the point of experiencing the, the issue with my airbrush. So I know now I'll have to use my 0.5. So I thought I'd include that bit in the explanation just to make you aware. So hey, I make the mistake so you don't have to. Anyway, we now have all the metallic parts painted and all the other parts are still gloss black. There's about, I don't know, 10 or 15 parts that are still gloss black, just gloss black primer. So we have the gloss black part, which is just the primer. I love this primer. I love this primer so much and we have the metallic parts which are now gloss black primer and then the duramelin dural, duramelib, the, the, the durable moomin that's been painted over the top and like i said it gives you a wonderful if you get it right it gives you a wonderful grain free metallic finish and that's why i like this paint so much yes it's a pain in the bum to use but look at that how many other paints that are acrylic based give you such a nice smooth grain free finish anyway so that's those two done right what's the next step the next step is to do the final bit of metallic -y blingy uh, and for this we're going to use our old standby the c1 metalizer yes now i'm going to need some preparation for this so you will need now if you've seen me do this before you'll know how this works so there'll be nothing new here for you i'm just going to put some paper down <sighs> right so we have some paper if you've seen me do this before in the eagle build you you know how to do this but if you've never watched one of my videos before now you're about to find out so what is c1 metalizer it is a buffable metallic buffing powder 
Now you do get a little mask with this, but I'm not, I'm not gonna use it for this bit, but I will use it when I do the proper buffing. So you get the metallic powder, you get a little mask. You do get some gloves, but I've not used them. I've got my own gloves. Uh, and you get a couple of the little applicators. And you do get some little buffing pads, but I've got my own again, so I don't need those. I'm gonna put that to one side somewhere. And get my little buffing pads. Where are my pads? For my little buffing pads, I've just got some bog standard makeup baby sponge things. They're just little cotton pads. They look like little biscuits, they're quite edible. Uh, little cotton pads, and that's all you need. But you will need to put down paper because this stuff goes everywhere, everywhere. So what do we do? This is where I'm gonna show you the difference now between and why I've done these metallic and these just left as gloss black. So what you do is you get your powder. It looks fantastic. It's just this dark, dark gunmetal colour powder. I, I don't think this is just graphite, but it's very similar to graphite. So anyway, how do you do this? Well, you have to wear gloves because it will go everywhere. Don't wear your best outfit because you're guaranteed to get this on your pants. Trust me, it'll, you'll drop apart and it'll just put powder everywhere. I've lost two pairs of jeans to this stuff already. Couldn't be simpler. All you do, you get your powder on your little stick. And quite simply rub it on use little circular motions and take your time don't go too heavy don't start really jamming it in there you just want to get a good covering try and make sure you work it into all the little nooks and crannies do, 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 do. it's quite relaxing uh, there's no right and wrong with this it's kind of idiot proof you can't really go wrong with it you can't put on too much you can always put on more if you want to, if you don't think you've got enough, but there's no way you can actually put on too much. There's no there's no wrong application. So we're just gonna cover this piece entirely. Now I'm not 100% sure which bits are visible on this piece and which bits aren't. It also gets very slippy as well when you've got powder on it. So yeah, you might ping it off the desk a few times. Uh, I've let the paint dry for 24 hours, by the way, just to make sure it's fully cured. Now, it does say in the instructions this stuff is best applied over a gloss black base for the most chromey chromey effect you want to use a gloss black base and that's true uh, and i'll explain that when we do the gloss black piece there's a sp specific stipulation but you can do it over anything you want uh, and it will give different results depending on what's underneath the powder <laughs> not very exciting i am actually bulking at the idea of how many parts i've got to do this to now it's basically all the exterior armor parts both silver and black i've got to do all of them apart from that the, the, the black parts the bits are going to stay black at like the feet and the backpack i've got to do all of them it's going to take me forever now i'm not sure which bits are visible so i, I think nothing on the inside is visible it doesn't really matter I'm not too fussed because if it is it's, it'll still look silver anyway it's just the outside i'm more i'm focused on so we have our powder this is now on it looks like it's been covered in graphite so what do you do what you do take your buffing pad can you guess yeah you buff it and you want something that's cotton soft uh, disposable is best because you're going to go through a lot of these you could use cotton buds but the risk is if you use a cotton bud you might scrape away at the paint but if you've got a little like hard to get to little corners you can use a cotton bud but just go gently because the, the big problem with this is if you use a cotton bud and the cotton rubs away and you get the plastic tube and it goes scrape and yeah that's not good all you do get your buffing pad and just buff it very gently go gentle and just use circular motions you can put a bit of pressure on but not too much now i've, I've explained this in videos before but again if this is the first video of mine you're ever watching the way this basically works is very similar to graphite in that basically and this is my understanding i could be wrong but this is by the way i understand that you're putting this metallic powder on there which naturally which has a certain reflective quality but when you first put it on it's all higgledy piggledy all the particles are all randomly oriented and it just looks gray a bit like graphite however when you buff it and again i could be wrong this is how my brain figures it out 
when you buff it what you do is you actually orient all the particles you force them all into like a a nice neat pattern to line up and when you do that they all flatten out and they smooth down over the surface instead of being a lump of powder on the surface it becomes this very fine coating of metallic flakes which reflect the light and because they're all lined up a bit better and the laying on the surface thinner they reflect it more and you get a more metallic sheen so there we have our now shined up piece and as you can see as I drop the little pad that's why you want to not wear your best pants because you will drop these things you can see now hopefully that looks even more metallic -y. move that out of the way uh, now if you want to you can go and add more you can add more on top and build up the shine you're not going to get a super chrome reflection if you've got like this a silver base but that's fine we're not worried it's not a problem because this is why we want the two different colors so that's just over the duramil 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 dangerous boobies that's over the dangerous boobies and it looks pretty darn good you can keep buffing it for more shine so that is awesome that now looks like a piece of pressed aluminium and i love that you can compare it to the inside where it was not quite as shiny the outside yeah now this stuff is pretty tough uh, unlike graphite and some other powders this stuff is pretty hardcore it can put up with handling if i wasn't wearing gloves and i was handling this you would get fingerprints on it but you can just rub them off it's quite durable uh, you can do sort of washes and things over it and it may affect it a little bit but it gives it a nice sort of tarnished look but we're going to have to gloss varnish these because we've got to put decals on so it is a shame because we will lose some of that exact metallic twinge but yeah that looks fantastic now let's put some on the matte black piece and see on the matte black on the gloss black piece and see what happens this is where it is made or broke makes up bleh, 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 words this is make or break time because this will either be a massive difference or it'll look like complete gash and there won't be much difference and i've just wasted a load of time when i could have just done it all black and not painted the silver bits so you can see here the natural color of the of the powder when it's just higgledy piggledy on the surface it's kind of just a gray color shiny metallic gray it's just metal powder really i assume i don't know specifically what is in this i did ask i do apologize i think it's chris i did ask chris the guy that makes this stuff how it just is so durable how it sticks so well and i can't really give too much away because of trade secrets but it does it sticks to the surface uh, now if you're doing it over a gloss black primer like this or you can do it over gloss black paint if you want a real chromey look you can do it over gloss black paint on the website it does say in the instructions enamel or lacquer paints but you can use acrylic paints if you want to it's not it's not a biggie basically as long as it's, as long as it's a nice fully cured gloss black finish you get the best chrome results uh, it is important that if you do that if you do it over a gloss black surface uh, you do not in any way polish or buff that base coat that gloss black especially if it's a primer or a paint do not buff it at all you just want to get the gloss black on there primer or paint whichever you prefer or whatever color you want you can use different colors you want to get the gloss black on there and that's it you don't want to buff it because that will affect the way the powder adheres to the surface because even on a, like this gloss black primer surface the way a gloss surface works is the smoother a surface the more likely it is to reflect light a matte surface is all rough and got little tiny almost like golf ball mark little golf ball dimples all over it microscopic and that's why it's matte because it scatters the light in every direction a gloss surface is actually smooth uh smoother and the light is all reflected in a more uniform direction a perfect mirror would actually be a perfectly flat with no imperfection surface but that's actually kind of impossible to make so do not be tempted to if you've got a gloss black surface and it's not quite as shiny as you think don't be tempted to buff it or anything like that because that will make it too smooth and the powder won't adhere even on a glossy surface like a varnish like a primer it, it it's still slightly imperfect imperfect so now let's give this a go we're going to do this one 
give this a buff. Now I'm hoping it makes a nice big difference. It may only be a very subtle difference. But as long as it's something the eye can pick up on ever so slightly, then it'll have done its job and I'll be a happy bunny. Because I want there to be a slight difference between the painted panels and the panels that are just primed. I want it to be super subtle because here you've got the particles but the underneath them is black and that black is is more reflective than the metal dual aluminium paint so it should be a bit more reflective and it should impart a sort of color underneath so if I did like a gloss blue surface underneath it might have more of a blue tint to it if I did a gloss red surface it might have more of a slightly red tinge to it, it might not I did ask Chris if you could do it over like a, or we did have a conversation about it, uh, you know, could you do it over a gloss yellow surface to get like gold or gloss gold? And he was like, you might not work, might not come out like gold. So let's just give this a good old rubbage. As you can see, this is taking some time. So the entire process of powdering and buffing this whole model is going to take me like a few days probably, but it's fairly relaxing. I'm not too fussed about these interior parts because I can't quite get to them. So I could get a cotton bud if I could find my cotton buds. There are the cotton buds. The cotton buds is here. So you can get in there and give it a cotton bud wiggle. Buff it with that. Again, just be careful because you don't want to get the little plastic tube sticking out and scraping the scraping the powder off and scraping your paint you can see powders coming off so just gently work it and you'll see it just comes out looking really nice I love this stuff for most models if it's never going to be handled like the Eagle I used this stuff on the thruster bells for the Eagle and when I finished I didn't gloss varnish it because I knew they're never going to be handled they're never going to come into contact with hands and it's not a big problem if they get some handling, a little bit of handling, because this stuff, like I say, is quite durable, so it was fine. But for this, because I have to do, if I wasn't doing water slide decals, I'd just get all this stuff buffed up, and that would be as much as I'd need to do. I'd just assemble a model and done. But because of two things, one, I need to do decals, and two, I need to do some panel lining with enamels. Now what I learned was if you take enamel paints and just apply them to the panel lines and then rub them off, the powder doesn't come off but it does tarnish slightly and it goes a little rough looking and it does give this wonderful slightly used metal look which I used on the Eagle thruster bells. It came out brilliantly but it does affect it. So if I want to keep a lovely smooth clean look I'm going to have to gloss varnish it to protect this powder. So. I don't have a choice so it will lose some of this so anyway there we go look at that that is incredibly gorgeous I'm so pleased with that that is beautiful and I drop it in the powder oh, and again <sighs> that is gorgeous now this might not come out on camera but if you compare the two you can see probably won't come out on camera so I apologize but there is an ever so slight color difference between them this piece is just like a naturally darker, more gunmetally, shiny gunmetal kind of colour than this one, which is like a shiny metal because the silver plate is less reflective, but it's also influencing the colour and the tint. So there we go. So that is what I now need to do to every single armour piece on this kit. And it's going to take me a while. The real shame is, like I say, when I put a gloss varnish on this, it's not going to, it's not going to ruin it completely, but it will dull it a little bit. I am tempted to build this without any decals on it at all, just to leave this as it is. I don't know. I might do. I might do. I don't know, though. We'll see. But I'm really pleased with that. Look at that. I don't know if it'll come out on camera, but there's a big difference. So I've got certain parts marked out to be this, and certain parts marked out to be that. Most of it's going to be this colour, and then there'll be a few accent parts. <sighs> so I'll go and get all that done. Now, it's going to take me a few days. So I'll leave this episode here. Um 
because I don't want to get into the next step. This has gone on for quite a while, so I don't want to get into the next step because this video will be too long. So we're going to leave this episode here. I'll go off and do all that. And when we come back, we'll probably start the gloss varnishing. I need to get more powder. Oh, do you know, dropping, dropping everywhere. Uh, yes, so I've got some like gloss varnishing and stuff. We can do all that in the next episode. So it just remains for me to say thank you very much for watching, as always. Uh, don't forget, if you've never, uh, if you don't know about it, do make sure if you're on Facebook to go along and join the Model Makers Boom Hut. Uh, it's facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash model boom hut. It is a fantastic community that we set up. Uh, as in the treehouse, we set it up and it's for people just like you who you're either just starting out, you're a hardcore professional, you're just an enthusiast, you're an amateur, whatever. It doesn't matter what skill level of model making you have. It's a place for you to hang out, make new friends, and you will. Um, most of the people in there, including us that started it, are all complete nutters, so you'll have a great time. Hang out, share pictures of your work, get advice, and just be cool. Uh, you'll make a lot of new friends in there, and you'll get loads and loads of good advice. Not just from us in the treehouse, but from all the members. Look at that, it's beautiful. It's a very subtle difference. It's very, I, don't even, I, can, I can see I'm going to watch this back, and it'll be basically exactly the same colour. But trust me, it's there. You'll see it in the right light. Yeah, so go along to the Boom Hut. It's absolutely free. Uh, we're almost up to 3,000 members. We are doing a giveaway. When we get to 3,000 members, I will be giving something away. And it's kind of something cool. So, yeah. I'll just say Master Grade and we'll leave it at that. Yeah. Um, so go along and join. Don't forget, of course, as well, uh, if you'd like to, uh, you can support me on Patreon. Patreon.com forward slash Model Making Guru. Uh, help me keep doing what I do, help keep the lights on so I can carry on doing this full time for you and keep making stuff and content. Um, but that's going to do it. So thank you very much for watching. Take care of yourselves. Go make something awesome. Go be, this is really hypnotizing. I could sit and do this all day. Go be awesome. And until next time, adios amoebas. Buff, 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 buffing, buffing all the non-shine away.